They smelled the town before they saw it. It was a bad smell, damp, fishy and miserable, hanging like fog over the road. They heard the town before they saw it, the shrill calls of thousands of seagulls circling above. At the top of the hill the car paused. The car looked official, like it might belong to the government, unmarked and neutrally coloured. It had never travelled this road before. It was a stranger's car. Below, the road sharply descended into the town. There were two people in the back, a boy named Ewan and his mother, a frail, worried-looking woman. Ewan pretended not to, but through the window he surveyed the town. One word sprang to mind as he surveyed it. That word was bad. Ewan's instincts were sharp. Ballydog was the baddest town in the country, possibly the world. There were no other towns within 40 kilometres of Ballydog because nobody wanted to live within 40 kilometres of it. It huddled in its harbour meanly, like a miser guarding his hoard. Even the weather seemed to dislike this town. Rain lashed down in it while the sun was shining everywhere else up and down the coast. Wind tried to blow its roofs off. Clouds hung low and sealed in the dampness. The town, as if attempting to have a revenge on nature, used its fish finger factory to poison the sky. The farms grew nothing but discontent. The people of Ballydog embodied the seven deadly sins and a few extra sins they had invented for themselves. There was manipulation, grabbiness, excessive bossiness, slimy slipperiness, aggressive scheminess and plain dishonesty happening on every street every day. But above all, there was badness. Anybody who wanted to be different in Ballydog needed to be careful. The town would work on them until they were broken and persuaded to see the world its way, or it would just eat them for breakfast.